Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, and today I'm going to show you how to use the OpenAI Generative Language Program, ChatGPT, with a 3D modeling program like Blender. So by now, I'm sure we're all familiar with ChatGPT and the capabilities of a AI language program. And for those who aren't familiar, Blender is a free and open source 3D creation program. Blender supports the entirety of the 3D modeling pipeline, including modeling, rigging, animation, video editing, and game creation. And today, I'm going to show you how you can use ChatGPT to actually make some 3D models using Blender. So as usual, make sure you have Blender downloaded and installed into your computer. For the purposes of this video, we're going to be using Blender 3.6. As you can see, Blender is available on Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and even Steam. Once you have Blender downloaded and installed, as you can see, it's quite the intimidating program to look at. Today, I'm going to try my best to make it as easy as possible for you using the tools like ChatGPT. You see, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be asking ChatGPT for some Python code which we can actually use to create some 3D models. So for now, let's go to ChatGPT. And in the text prompt below, let's ask it to make us 10 cubes in Python. Once you've asked ChatGPT to generate some code for you, take note of this code since this is what we'll be using to make 10 cubes in Blender. So let's go back to the Blender program. And by default, there's always going to be a single box as the base for your 3D model. The first thing we're going to do is to delete the default box that Blender sets for us. Then, I want you to focus on the right-hand side menu and look for the button that says Editor Type. Go ahead and click on it, and in the drop-down list that it opens, we want to click on Text Editor under Scripting. Then, mouse over text and create a new text block. This is where we're going to be copying the code from ChatGPT. Now, once you've copied the code, go ahead and hover over text again, and then we're going to run the code by clicking on AutoScript. As you can see, by using the Python code generated from ChatGPT, we can now automatically make 10 cubes in Blender. And as you can see, editing parameters in the code is as simple as changing a few numbers, you just need to know which ones to change. It really is quite insane what you can do without any experience and just a little creative know-how using ChatGPT. As you can see, by changing the number of the range of cubes, we can change the number of cubes there are. So go ahead and change it to 15 and run the script again. As you can see, we went from having 10 cubes to 15. It really is as simple as that, isn't it? Now, let's delete all these cubes and go back to ChatGPT to generate some new prompts. So, if in the previous prompt we asked it to make 10 cubes, this time let's ask it to design 10 spheres in Python for us for Blender 3.6. As you can see, it doesn't even take too long in order to create 10 spheres of code for us. One thing I really appreciate is the ability of ChatGPT to even give me some tips on how to use the code. So just like in the previous prompt, let's copy this code and put it into Blender. So just like the previous example, let's create a new text block and then copy the code that we made for 10 spheres from ChatGPT into that new text block. And let's go ahead and run the script. As you can see, it barely took us any time and we now have 10 spheres to play with in Blender. Now, if you want to be a bit more in depth about how this all works, if you go back to ChatGPT, you can see that there's actually some gray lines of code shown within the code for the 10 spheres. You see, each of these lines of gray code actually tell you what the succeeding codes are there for. As you can see, the first few lines of code will clear the existing objects that are currently in the Blender program. Then the code will generate 10 spheres for us in the radius and color that we have actually chosen. 
Then the number next to range will be the number of spheres, while the next lines of code will actually generate spheres. It may definitely take some getting used to, but with a little bit of reading, you can definitely make sense of this lines of Python code as well. Now, if we go back to the Blender program, as you can see, the 10 spheres are all perfectly spaced and positioned. And that's all thanks to the code that we generated from ChatGPT. So the steps again, just to recap, is to always make a new text box using the script manager on the right side of Blender. You'll always want to copy code that you generate from ChatGPT into this text box. And to help familiarize yourself with the Blender program, on the upper right corner is where you're going to see all the different elements currently shown in Blender. You can click on any element on the upper right corner and it'll highlight itself on the main screen of Blender. What's a real nifty feature about Blender is its ability to do freeform modification of objects. For example, you can easily pick one of these spheres and edit and move its position and even morph it in any way you want. You see, if we weren't going to use the ChatGPT code to generate some models for us, we would be manually making each of these shapes by hand using the Add Cube button on the left-hand side. This is where you can also choose which kind of shape to add to your current project, whether it be a cube, a cone, or even a cylinder. Now, 3D modeling is quite a time-consuming process, so adding each of these shapes by hand really does take quite the amount of time. And that's where the beauty of ChatGPT and these AI language models come. Just for a quick example, let's go back to ChatGPT and let's ask it to generate some code to create a large cylinder for us in Blender using Python. Once that code is generated, go ahead and copy it and let's do the exact same steps we did in order to create the 10 cubes and the 10 spheres. So just like before, let's create a new text box. Then let's proceed to copy the code for the large cylinder into said text box. Oh, and of course, don't forget to run the script. Now, once you've run the script, all the current elements that are on your project should have been deleted and there should now be a large cylinder in place of all those elements. As you can see, using ChatGPT with Blender is actually as simple as knowing what kind of prompts to use. The limits are really quite endless, and it's great to just experiment and see what you can figure out to using prompts in ChatGPT. And with that, we've reached the end of our video. You now have the basic ability to use ChatGPT in order to generate some codes to make simple shapes in Blender. If you have any inquiries, feel free to leave them down in a comment below. And don't be afraid to share with us some of the code and prompts that you guys have been using in Blender. Leave a like if you've learned something new, and feel free to subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this kind of content. Thanks so much for watching guys, and we'll see you all in the next one.